So the interesting thing about LLVM now is we have a C compiler, apparently, that uses has been written three times. And <laughs> what we can do is we actually take the same code we use for the interpreter, which is just the C code with one function per op code, compile with LLVM GCC. Well, what do you get? You basically get bytecode where you have one function for every operation. So you have one ridiculously huge texture lookup operation, or one you know, nice small simple dot product operation, or your add is literally just add these three operands and return it. So at build time in factory, as it were, you compile this stuff with LVM GCC, you get bytecode, and now you have all the low-level bits you need to be able to do this stuff at runtime. At runtime then, you know, this comes on your Mac OS 10.5 Leopard DVD, which you should buy as soon as it comes out. <laughs> <laughs> and OpenGL to LVM basically says, aha, okay, you want to do OpenGL stuff, do you? Well, I can open up this bytecode file and I will lazily stream out the functions that I'm interested in. So uh, you're doing dot products. Okay, well, I will find the code for a dot product and, you know, your function, which is your coming from your AST, instead of actually inserting code to do a dot product, you insert a, co a call instruction that calls the function that does a dot product. Right. So this means you've taken your AST and instead of expanding code manually, you've expanded a whole bunch of function calls. Well, suddenly I have basically an unrolled interpreter, right? This is not very efficient, this isn't very good. Well, the other interesting thing about LVM is that it apparently includes an optimizer. <laughs> <laughs> and so you, the, uh, at runtime then, once this is converted to legal LVM code, which is just straightforward code that does a bazillion function calls, um, then we just say, okay, inliner, force inline this operation, this, this operation, this operation, this operation, which macro expands all of these, you know, dot products or multiples or whatever else we want, into the function. Right. Suddenly all of our calls are gone, our vertex program or pixel shader is something named, and we can now run through the optimizer, so inscombine goes crazy hacking and deleting and slashing and sometimes too much, but now it's all fixed. <laughs> <laughs> and now we get a nice optimized function which we can then send to the JIP. And so that is how graphics on Mac OS X Leopard or one of the ways graphics are better. And, um, you know, this is a, a, an interesting application because it's, you know, combining C front end, which everybody knows and loves, with runtime, with a little bit of glue for doing custom optimizer stuff in the context of OpenGL. But there's no other system that really does this. I mean, you know, GCC does compile time stuff, which is great. Um, so things like Java JITs and other things to do runtime stuff can do this part, but that means you, have, you can't do this part, right? And so it's the combination of all these different things that make it an interesting solution. And this also means that they can retain their interpreter, and the interpreter still exists, and uses exactly the same code pass. If they hit a bug, the first thing they do is step through the interpreter and try to understand what, what's wrong with the code. Because the same code works with the JIT and the interpreter and makes it easy to find the bug. Assuming we have no bugs, which we don't, of course, right? <laughs> so does that make sense to people? Um, does anybody have any questions before I move on to the next crazy thing? Yeah. Yeah. So are, are your bytecodes um, cross-platform, or do they have various SSC and multi-packet intrinsics? They have SSC and multi-packet intrinsics. There's one, one bytecode file for each target. So the leopard does work. So what element components actually ship the leopard? Uh, so the front end is not shipped. The, all the ships are transparently hidden away inside of the OpenGL di dynamic library are a static link copy of the JIT and the optimizer and some cool stuff. So all the optimization of the system? Uh, the ones that OpenGL uses. <coughs> which, which is a subset of the ones the C front end runs. I mean, because the C front end, front end runs, it is running a bunch of optimizations. So how do developers get access to LVM GCC? They download it from LVM.org. Oh, good. <laughs> so that would actually tells programmers to do this? No, 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 this, this, no. yeah, programmer, this, this is, the developers, graphic <laughs> developers write graphic shaders, write them in GLSM, yeah. which is an industry standard, has nothing to do with LVM. Oh, that's not great. Right, and so, like a good compiler, if it's doing its job, nobody even knows it exists. So you just get their frame rates on Google 3. <laughs> on, their, on their laptop, which has crappy graphics, right? <laughs> <laughs> None of this is in Tiger, this is all leopard, is that? Uh, very soon it will be in Tiger, but okay. only with specific hardware revisions. Okay. So, uh, because of a lot of things you can't ship 
updates and overrides. Right, but it's not, it didn't ship with part of that right. data port file. Okay. So, what did we, oh, so, okay, I, I said all this stuff. So we have GLSL, we make calls, we make, we inline it, we have code to And I said all this stuff. So, OpenGL is interesting because it actually uses LVM in about a dozen ways. Pixel and Vertex Shader are one way. It does vertex submission, it actually does runtime code specialization of the fixed function pipeline, if you know what that is. It, it does a bunch of different things. Another one that's explainable on one slide is color space conversion. And so color space conversion is literally I have an image in one color format and I would need to get it into another color format. And so this happens when you have you know, a JPEG file which gives you 8-bit per pixel color channels and you want to display it on a 16-bit per pixel you know, window or something. There, there's a lot of reasons this happens, and this is very uh, CPU intensive, important pieces of the code, or important pieces of the graphic stack for various different reasons. Well, the way this typically works is that you have a gigantic for loop, and this for loop basically iterates over all the pixels in your image, and for each pixel in the image, you do this gigantic switching that has several hundred cases in it. For each case, you say, oh, well, I have an RGB, blah, 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 this case. Well, this is how I unpack the red, green, and the blue out of this encoder. So this is a bunch of shift scenarios. And then after you come out of the case, you say, OK, well, we need to write this out into a new format, which means you know, RGB 888. This is how I pack it back together, and then I'm done. The reason that it's written this way is that you have you know, 200, 200 different formats for various reasons. And this is, there's an n squared problem here where you can't convert from anything to anything else, and you don't want to have n squared of these things. Right? That's um, so the problem is there's not a really good way to optimize this because it has to be fully gen general because anybody could give you, you know, a, this is an implementation in the library, and anybody could send you any image, you have no information about what's coming in, right? Well, so at runtime, you actually do know what's happening. <laughs> and so at runtime, you can say, aha, you know, they're sending a lot of these JPEG images at me, and they have a lot of this, and they want a lot of that, and so I can actually get rid of both switch statements, and make a specialized version of this function, which makes it tiny now. And all it does is it does a, you know, unpacking of the red, unpacking of the green, unpacking of the blue, then repacking together, and suddenly you have uh, in a loop with eight instructions. That's much better than doing a switch and all this crazy stuff, right? Um, so, but of course, because this is LVM, you can do compiler optimization. Compiler optimization is basically you can pull together all the shifts and the ands and stuff and turn it into more efficient. So runtime, somebody was asking the mailing list at one point, why does anybody care about runtime optimization? I did not respond. <laughs> but sometimes it's useful. 